Welcome to another edition of the TPO Fly of the Month. Uh, this month I'm going to tie a uh, beadhead, tungsten beadhead, John Barr crane fly pattern. As you can see here I have a 200R. This one's going to be in a size 14. Uh, this is the size that I've been doing very well with uh, in Pennsylvania on the limestone streams. Uh, I like the unfinished tungsten bead. I think it complements the color of the fly very well. Uh, for my thread I'm going to use 70 UTC Ultra Thread in uh, tan. Uh, I'm going to start this fly off by uh, wrapping a underbody of uh, 20 thousandths lead, 16 turns. This has actually been my anchor fly for fishing on uh, Spring Creek and uh, the other day when I was fishing on Salkin Creek. All right, been taking a lot of fish on this fly. All right. Um, before I start to build my fly up, I'm going to glue, put some glue on the lead. All right. Now I find that putting glue on the lead keeps the fly from turning when you get finished with the fly. All right. So now I'm going to take my thread and start my wraps. I'm not going to cover the lead entirely. Break the thread off. Adjust the hook. All right, there we go. It's my underbody of the fly. All right, now for the tails, John Barr likes to use uh, marabou. I actually found this chickaboo in my fly tying stuff. It's a whiting chickaboo. It's gray, a little dun color, and I think it matches up perfectly with the uh, dubbing that I'm going to use for this. All right, so I'm going to put the tails in. Now remember the tails on the crane fly, really, really short. But if you look at pictures of crane flies, the tails are really, you know, a real prominent feature of the fly. Okay. Cut that. I'm gonna make some thread wraps there. I'm gonna build up a ramp going to the lead. Alright, now for the back on this fly. I'm going to use tan thin skin. This is what the original recipe calls for. All right. I tied in well up the fly. Okay, tie up my thin skin. Now I'm going to come back. I'm using 4X fluorocarbon just because that's you know what I found. You can use whatever mono. I'm probably wasting some money here. But that's all right. Maybe the fish won't see the rib make it more realistic. Alright, so there we go. I got my tails tied in, I have my rib tied in, and I have the back tied in. Alright, now for dubbing, I'm going to use number one Hairs Air Plus. It's really light. Perfect tan color for the crane flies. I'm going to dub the thread. Now this fly is not one that I'm going to dub thin. This fly is going to be very thick. So I'm going to have to dub the thread numerous times. Crane flies definitely aren't a uh, thin bodied insect. They're very fat, they're very bulky, and your imitations should not be thin. So I'm going to dub again. There we go. I'm going to turn the fly towards me. I'm going to look at it just to make sure that I have the body nice and fat. I found that they actually work better. The, the, the more bulky you make them, the better it works. Now, I only started using this fly just because I think that every trout in Pennsylvania has seen a waltz worm. So I just figured, you know, throw them something a little bit different. And uh, I don't think it's going to work anything, you know, any better than a waltz worm. But it's just different. And I just believe that, you know, you should always have something a tad bit different. All right. So there we go, I dubbed my fly, you can see it's very fat. All right now I'm going to take the thin skin, I'm going to come over the top, I'm going to hold it down, make a few wraps, pull it tight, make a few more wraps behind, you know, behind the bead. 
Now I can cut it, lift up, cut, get it very close. All right, now I'm going to come with my rib. I'm going to space. I'm going to space them pretty close together. If you look, I don't know how well you could see, but there's some real segmentation going on here, and crane fly larvae are extremely segmented. Now I don't know if the fish notice, but I think the humans notice, and I think it's very important for confidence that the fly looks good. So there we go. Fly's almost done. Trim off some of the fibers that are hanging all over the place there. As you can see, this fly looks, you know, pretty buggy. It's definitely not uh, a fly that's tied to perfection. But I think that's one of the main reasons why it works so well. So now I'm going to take a little bit of glue, just dab it on the head of the fly. Going to whip finish. I don't have my brush because uh, the old cat blew it up last night. I heard something crash and uh, we had a ton of glue on the floor. It was a big mess. That's why you don't hear Tucker coming near the fly timetable. I think he's scared. But there you go. I'm going to clip my thread. And uh, here's my John Barr crane fly larva. Might trim some of these pieces that are hanging off. And there it is. All right, guys. Tie up a few of these. And uh, I don't think you'll be too upset that you did.